So, so far we have been looking at this version of uh, uh, you know value iteration or you know, policy iteration where uh, we have been talking about uh, uh, you know uh, doing this in a synchronous manner right whenever we have been doing the computation whether doing the sample computation here on the slide right or uh, or when we did uh, uh, you know the the actual explanation as why this is uh, uh, dynamic programming and all that right but when we actually did the pseudo code when we did the algorithm i was telling you that we are not quite doing it as a <coughs> synchronous update right so when you're talking about synchronous update uh, there are multiple problems so first thing is uh, you have to uh, you know have two copies of the value function right so you have to have the value function uh, uh, corresponding to time k and then you also have the value function corresponding to k plus 1 so that is two so you have to you want to get rid of it right so one thing that we can do it is do it in place and like i was describing to you when you do it in place right so uh, what is happening is when i'm going when i'm trying to update a state right in the later part of an iteration right when i'm updating the state in the later part of the iteration i'm actually using the new value for the state right the new value function for the state so when i'm updating the let's say uh, the n plus uh, nth state right then for all the states up till n minus 1 i'd be using the k plus 1 version of the value function and states from n plus 1 onwards i'll be using the kth iteration of the value function okay suppose i have states 1 2 dot 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 some n dot dot all the way up to capital f right let's say that's the states i have so when i'm updating the value function for state k right so when i'm computing vk plus 1 of state n right i'll be using vk plus 1 of state 1 up till state n minus 1 and I will be using v k for state n plus 1 up till state n. So, this is the in place update right we are doing right. So, in some sense we are no longer doing it synchronously right it is not like we are computing k plus 1 with the values from iteration k right. So, this is already become some kind of an asynchronous thing and we can take this even further right. So, we can take this asynchronous update even further and say that hey I really do not have to do this you know over every state right so i can take you know k right and then i can visit these uh, I, I can i can i can come, come up to iteration k and then i can sample some subset of states from capital n right and just for those subset of states i'll compute my k plus 1 value function right and then for the next iteration i can compute another subset of the states right and then only for those subsets i'll compute the next step of the value function right so if i keep doing this right as long as i ensure that every state is visited sufficiently often right so there so basically it's not that i should update a state only once and then forget about it as long as i keep visiting the states again and again and updating them many many times over all the iterations right so now with the synchronous dp every state gets updated once and exactly once in every iteration so, so if I do k iterations then every state would have been updated k times right with asynchronous dp if I do k iterations some states could have been updated k times but some states would have been updated less than k times. So, what we are asking is as k tends to infinity right, as you keep doing more and more iterations right every state should get updated many many times it should not be that some states get updated only a few number of times right. And so, this, this gives us a flexibility right to choose the order of updates we can go in whatever order we want and more importantly we can also do things like you know uh, i can have some interactions with the environment right and then uh, uh, and then uh, 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 some uh, uh, dynamic programming updates so this can be done so this i basically i can interleave something like rl and then dp so we will we'll come to the rl part in a bit right so we can do this and we can also do something very interesting right and in fact we will we will actually look at how this helps us design efficient algorithms as we go along uh, we can focus on updates on parts of the state space that are relevant to the agent so that are not necessarily uh, uh, you know that uh, i mean so the states that are not necessarily visited uh, uh, by the agent 
right, under an optimal policy. There could be some parts of the state space that never get visited under the optimal policy. So, why is it? Suppose I have a grid world like this and I say my, I always start in this state and I end this, this state, then the, these corners, right, are less likely to be visited. So, maybe you know very, very, very uh, random uh, choice of exploration can put me in those corners, but normally, right, so I will be only visiting states that are between these two lines mostly, right, uh, when I am trying to go from the start to the goal here. And if that is all the problem that I am interested in solving, so I do not have to, you know, invest a lot of computational resources in these corner states, right, and I do not have to update them often, right. So, I can just be okay with not knowing the right policy there, because they are not likely to be visited once I have the correct policy to go from start to go. So, if you have these kinds of, you know, estimates of which states are actually important or relevant for solving a problem, then I can start focusing my, uh, you know, uh, 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 computation only on those parts of the states that are relevant. And because asynchronous DP is a thing, right, asynchronous, asynchronous DP is shown to work, as long as, you know, I have some, you know, small amounts of budget. Uh, you know, so left for visiting these corner states, I should be fine. I will still be able to compute the uh, 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 correct policy, right, at least in the spaces of relevance. So, that is one very nice way of uh, doing dynamic programming that allows us to, you know, adaptively choose which parts of the state space are relevant to the agent, okay. So, this approach is called uh, real time dynamic programming, right, or R for real time dp right rtdp right this uh, uh, was uh, um, proposed some time back by uh, bradkey and barto let's say that you have a policy pi right at some point right so some some iteration you have come to some policy pi k and i want to improve this policy pi k is either by doing you know uh, policy iteration or just just maybe apply value iteration starting with uh, this particular policy pi k or whatever right so, what I do now is let us say this is my this is my domain right. right. So, this is my grid world that I am operating in instead of saying that from pi k to go to pi k plus 1 right, I want to go from pi k to pi k plus 1, I will do my computation on the entire state space yes right. I will do my computation I will, I will do my dynamic programming update on my entire state space yes instead of saying that. So, what I will do is I will say okay, I will go and start from state S, yes, right. I will generate a trajectory, some trajectory I will generate by following pi k, right. I will generate a trajectory by following pi k, right. Now, what I do these states that I visited while I followed pi k, right, those are the states that I will pick for doing my dynamic programming update. So, instead of doing the dynamic programming update through all of yes, right. So, I will not do that. I will only do it for the states that I visit while I am following policy pi k. Now, once I have done a dynamic programming update on that, right. So, it could either be that I have improved my estimate for pi k, right, or I have done my value iteration update on these. Now, with this new valuation, right, if it could be v pi k or it could be the next iteration of the value iteration, I will use that to define a new policy. So, that gives me my pi k plus 1. So, I have pi k, I visit these states, right, I will do an update on that, right, and then what I will do, I will go back and do a greedification step with respect to this v pi k, and then I will now get a pi k plus 1, right. Of course, with well the greedification also, it does not make sense for me to do the greedification for states that are not visited. So, only on these states, I will do the greedification. So, I will get a new uh, uh, policy pi k plus 1. Right. Of course, doing just one trajectory might not be enough. So, sometimes what we do is we do multiple trajectories using the pi k uh, uh, policy, right. And after I get a few, 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 uh, you know, trajectories and I, I have gathered enough states, I will go back, I will look at those states and update the value function for pi k in those states and try to do a gratification and then get to pi k plus. So, it is not that I just take pi k as it is, I might do some, you know, epsilon greedy version of pi k. Uh, so, that uh, 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 I get some exploration also put in. So, this is basically the idea behind real time dynamic programming. So, where instead of updating your uh, uh, value function or your policy on the entire uh, uh, state space, you choose some subset of the states to uh, update the value function on uh, based on 
a real execution that is it is called real time dynamic programming because you are actually executing the policy that you are learning right and then figuring out what are the states that you are going to visit while you are executing that policy right. And so that is basically the idea behind real time dynamic programming it is a form of asynchronous uh, uh, dynamic programming and actually turns out to be a, a pretty useful technique to have in your bag right. So of, of things that you can try uh, when you are trying to uh, solve a problem. So what is the crucial thing about this real time dynamic programming is that it is still a dynamic programming update right. So what does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, I will still be using this kind of an equation uh, to make the updates right. I will still be using that kind of an equation to make the updates. So that means I need to know I need uh, my p and I need to know my r uh, in order to make the uh, real time dynamic programming updates. This is kind of a step towards building a full RL solution. So we will see that right. So we can take this idea of you know asynchronous dynamic programming to a slight extreme right. So let us think of another way of looking at value iteration right. So we saw value iteration earlier so we are looking at another way of uh, doing value iteration right. So you can think of the value iteration as follows right. So so forget about that max for the time being right forget about that max for the time being right. So what does first of all the fact that I am doing max what does it mean that I am going to compute this expression say if that is a1 I am going to compute it for a1 I will compute it for a2 all the way to some am right. So if there are m actions I will compute this internal expression for all values of a only then I can take a max over a right. So I need to know this for all values of a. So I will compute it for all values a1 to am right. So what does that mean is really if you look at this update right. So what is it? It is a policy evaluation update right. Assuming I do action a1 first right and then I follow policy pi k thereafter right uh, whatever is my, the, the, my, my kth rate. So I am just using that right. So I am just doing that right? and then it is like, like I stop after just that one one iteration suppose I had been doing this as a you know policy evaluation step right then I would have done this iteration this update many 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 times until it has converged to the value function corresponding to the policy instead of doing that what I have done is let us take the fact that my first action is am in this state right let us say I take am right and after that I follow whatever is my current value function right. So whatever is the current policy I will just follow that right. So this is like one step of policy evaluation if you think about it right this is just one step of policy evaluation you have your policy iteration algorithm right. So you can think of what is happening within the expectation right as one step of policy evaluation. So after that what am I doing here is really I am trying to find the max a right basically the action that has the maximum uh, uh, value right. I am trying to find the action with the maximum value and then I am going to set that as my policy action right. So I am going to set that as my policy action and then find the what is the value corresponding to that policy action. So I am going to take the value corresponding to the argmax a of that expression right. So the value corresponding to the argmax a of this expression which essentially is the max of a that is the value function right. So this is basically the value function I get this is the value function I get after picking a greedy action in state yes according to the previous value function that makes sense. So this is one step of policy evaluation for assuming each action is the policy action in that state and then this is essentially the value function that you get by doing one step of gradification. So this corresponds to okay. So what does this look like? This looks like some kind of policy iteration right. So I do what would I, what would I have done in policy iteration? I will take a policy pi, evaluate it fully, find v pi and then be greedy with respect to v pi to get pi plus pi k plus 1 right. Uh, we uh, agree with respect to v pi k to get pi k plus 1 
right, and then evaluate pi k plus 1 get pi k plus uh, uh, I mean uh, v pi k plus 1 then be greedy with respect to v pi k plus 1 to get pi k plus 2 and so on so forth right. So, that is basically the uh, 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 sequence in which I would have gone in policy iteration right. But what I am saying here is you do not really have to go in that sequence right. If you look at value iteration what is happening is it is doing one step of policy evaluation whatever is the update I would have done for policy evaluation I do just one step of that computation in that state right. I do not iterate just one step of that computation and then I do a greedification step in that state alone. So, that I get a better estimate of the optimal value function at that state. So, that is basically what we are doing right. It turns out that this idea of interleaving policy evaluation and policy improvement right in some granularity can actually uh, you know you can you can you can do this at, uh, at, at different kinds of uh, granularity and we get what is called as generalized policy iteration right. So, normally what you do with policy evaluation is you start with a policy iteration you start with a pi and then you evaluate it you get a v pi and then you are greedy with respect to it you get a pi prime and then evaluate it you get v pi prime greedy with respect to it you get pi double prime and so on and so forth and you keep doing this you basically end up with v star and pi star. So, this is essentially your original policy iteration okay. So, the generalized policy iteration basically you are letting policy evaluation and policy improvement just happen you know in whatever order right. The only thing that you really need to take care is that you do enough of these right. So, basically you are visiting all the states often enough and you are not you know stopping the updates you keep doing the updates for a long time until this convergence happens. So, as long as you can show that the algorithm that you are implementing is some form of generalized policy iteration then you are guaranteed that that algorithm will converge to an optimal policy. It is a very powerful uh, idea and a lot of this uh, uh, you know uh, modern algorithms like uh, Q learning and SARSA and TD learning and all of these things that we will see later or Monte Carlo learning all of these things that see later all of these depend on the fact that they are some form of generalized policy iteration ok. The way they prove that it is correct is to show that it is some form of generalized policy iteration and then they are done with it. So, I am not going to get into the whole proof of it because it is it is pretty involved and we do not really need it at a basic RL course level, but it is good to uh, you know have that in the back of your mind saying that something like generalized policy iteration right. So, something like this right. So, instead of saying that I am going to go all the way to v pi right I am going to go all the way to v pi or I am going to go all the way to pi star. So, basically I will be doing something like this I will go some parts of that then I will go some parts of the way here I will go some parts there I will go some parts here eventually this will end up converging to v star and pi star. So, that is what we we show right it is not that v pi it is not like I start with the pi and I go to v pi and then from v pi I go to the greedy version of it. So, instead of that I can just go you know partly partly there I start off with some pi and then I go somewhat towards v pi right and then I still go and once I get closer to v pi then I I be greedy and then I get I get go go close to greedy with, with respect to whatever v function that you have and you keep doing this right. So, asynchronous dp right is, is one form of generalized policy iteration if you think about it value iteration is an extreme form of generalized policy iteration right and most reinforcement learning methods that we will see later or some form of generalized policy iteration or whatever. So, just to keep in mind that it is a very powerful technique and uh, so you do not really have to be very uh, you know uh, 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 very particular about whether convergence has been reached in the policy evaluation stage and whether uh, 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 you have visited all the states whether you are updating all the states and so on and so forth and that is as long as some kind of reasonable guarantees are satisfied uh, it will work. Good. So, we will stop here with this.